what's going on everybody it's your boy mood 616 here and i'm finally back with another hip-hop cd slash vinyl slash cassette update and this one right here is going to be everything that i picked up in 2019 uh, from the year 2019 so these are all 2019 releases i do have a couple um throwback releases like some old school albums that got released in 2019 that i'm going to show in this update uh, I'm not going to show the ones that I got from Chopped Hearing Records because it's a lot because I buy their monthly packages every month. So there's like 15 or 20, probably 20 albums because I'm going to do a full um, overview of the Chopped Hearing uh, CD line soon. So there is a few throwback albums, but most of the stuff is legitimately 2019 albums, um, just a couple random tapes and a bunch of vinyl and stuff too. So uh, this is what happens when you don't do an update all year <laughs> for your new stuff. So you have to kind of fit it into a, an, an, you know, one big ass video. So I do apologize for the length of this video right now. Um, so the video that's going to, I'm going to do after this is going to be my top 50 albums of 2019, all 2019 brand new albums. Uh, I've been trying to do this video for a couple weeks. I was waiting for a bunch of stuff to come in and it just never showed up. The mail has been really, really bad recently. Uh, so I am waiting on a bunch of uh, albums and things like that. So this is probably 95% of what I picked up this year. But like I said, I'm waiting on a few things in the post, which who knows, they might be in the video or not. I doubt it. But uh, um, but yeah, without further ado, man. So let's get right into this uh, 2019 releases. Uh, first up here from, um, I'll start with the uh, the throwback ones. This is from Gentleman Relief Records. Um, they released uh, the Trends of Culture. Uh, would have been their second album. I think this was supposed to come out in 1995 and it got shelved. Called When Trend Men Come. Uh, this, is, this is a fantastic, fantastic album. Like, in my opinion, I actually like this better than their first album. And I do like the very first Trends of Culture album. But this one right here, man, just... It's just bangers from top to bottom, man. Really, really good stuff. Awesome release from Gentleman's Relief Records. I can't believe they actually put this out. Uh, I will say all these Gentleman Relief Records releases are all limited to like 250 or 300 copies. So if you want copies of this, run over there and get them. I believe they're a company out of Australia. So, but yeah, that right there was awesome. I, I bumped that so much this year. Uh, so we're getting some more Nick Wiz. Apparently this is part of the uh, Seller Extras line, part one from 93 to 98. Uh, Nick Wiz, of course, has dropped all these seller sound compilations throughout the years. There's been like five volumes on CD and there's some on vinyl and things like that. But just so much material. Like, it's just crazy. Uh, if you're not familiar with the man, it's, he usually has, you know, a bunch of like Ran Reed stuff on there. Shabam Shadik, Sella Dwellas. The usual cats all over here, but there is a lot of stuff. Pudgy the Fat Bastard is always on these records. Guys, I really, really apologize for the... Um, the glare because there's really nothing I can do. It's just unfortunate. I just I can't do anything about it. I've tried to to solve this issue, but I can't. But this is amazing. Really, really good stuff. This is actually one of my holy grail releases. I couldn't believe when they announced this was coming out. Well, they didn't really announce it. They just kind of put them up on their websites. But this is the Shorty Long uh, Self Boogie album. Um, I remember reading about Shorty Long back in the source, like in the. I think it was like in the the hype column or something like that uh fat tape column i think he had a couple singles and stuff shorty doing his own thing was one of the songs i was reading about back in the day I remember checking it out and i think this was in 95 96 it would have came, the album would have dropped but it never dropped it got shelved or whatever and uh yeah all these years later we finally get shorty long fucking amazing i absolutely love this record it's great like 90s straight up boom bap shit i get a few instrumentals on here but yeah it is fully loaded um yeah, sorry about the glare again, if you guys can see that, but amazing. And then we got uh, the Makiba and Scratch Mental Fitness record, also from Gentleman's Relief Records. Uh, this is an album that I believe actually had a release before, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it didn't, or maybe it did. I actually, I'm not 100% sure. I, th I thought it had a release. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit more up-tempo, kind of like New Jack Swingy a little bit. Um, 1990 or 91, I think this originally would have been coming out, or it did come out. I think it did have a release. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. I, I love this era, man. Look at those outfits. That's just, <laughs> that's amazing. Like, they just don't, you just don't have hip-hop album covers like that anymore because, you know, nobody wears shit like that. Uh, these ones came from Redline Distribution, I believe. Uh, I think you can get these on a couple different websites, but... Uh, the BY, the Lost Tapes um, record. Uh, this is pretty cool, man. It's a pretty cool compilation of uh, 
tracks. I actually thought this was really dope, man. Um, so glad to have some BY in the collection. That's awesome. Love the album cover to this. That's some great shit right there. Yeah. So run over to Adrenal or Redline. Redline Music, I believe, has these. And these are again limited to like 250, 300 copies too. And also picked up uh, the chosen Apple Night EP. Uh, basically, it's an EP with a bunch of bonus tracks on here. This is really good. It's pretty rough sounding at times, I think. Uh, but still worth your time, man. It's really amazing. Um, good 90 shit right here. So big ups to these uh, record companies releasing all these, uh, you know, these classic unreleased albums or just obscure gems and shit like that and you know again to you know chop here in records too man but i'll get to that shit later uh we got some frankenstein here uh hip-hop triangle this is more or less just another compilation of stuff this is not brand new material um this, a lot of these songs were released on the the sound of science compilation that came out a bunch of years ago with the, with the exception of a couple different tracks on here too but that's about it um Frankenstein's an MC producer from Canada. It's just real. It's very, very '90s boom bap sounding shit, man. It's crazy. Uh, pretty dope stuff from somewhere in Ontario. I think Toronto, I believe. Ah, there's a picture of Toronto on the front, so I'm assuming he's from Toronto. So, uh, yeah, but Frankenstein, really dope shit. And last up for the kind of throwback, this one I I decided to include this one because it did get reissued. It's been out of print for a lot of years, and that's the Ill Bill. Uh, black metal compilation. I think this originally came out in 2005, six. I don't know why I never grabbed this. I've always been a, I've been an Ill Bill fan since like the 90s, and um, this one kind of bypassed me and went out of print. Didn't really think anything of it. Got reissued. I'm like, well, I got to pick it up now. But uh, you know, it's got uh, all the usual cats from that from that era, man. You know, Ill Bill, Sabak Red, Gore Tex. Um, I think Gore Tex is on here. Uh, Sick Jack and J Rue is on here. Q Unique. Um, Actually, maybe Gore-Tex isn't even on here. <laughs> I love the Charlie Manson samples that are on here, too. It's awesome. But, yeah, this is a dope compilation, man. Really, really good shit, man. So, that's it for the throwback show. Let's get into the actual 2019 releases. Uh, first up, Clear Soul Forces from crew from uh, Detroit. Um, this is their fourth album. And this is, uh, again, very, very awesome, man. These guys haven't disappointed me yet, man. All their albums have been really, you know solid as shit man so you know you can't really complain with some some awesome detroit hip-hop clear soul forces check it out man really enjoyed that one uh we got the showbiz in milano representing ditc uh short album 10 tracks you yeah, though milano had a big year he actually i'll be showing another album here in a second here but uh well man the glare of course i got the plastic on these little mini record type things but yeah showbiz in milano all produced by showbiz obviously good shit uh, then we got uh, Crime Apple and, oh man, do the production on here. Yeah, Buck Buck Dudley. I was trying to think of the guy's names. I wouldn't really call this an album. It's more of like an EP. Uh, is it Verdi Panim? I, I can't even pronounce the name of the, the, name of the album. It sounds Italian. Uh, Crime Apple, man, one of my favorites, uh, you know, modern, you know, new age kind of MCs. Really doing his thing, man. Had a big year, put out like three or four pretty dope records or projects this year. Like I said, this one's like eight tracks, so it's more or less kind of like an EP. I don't really consider like a lot of people this year, man, with these albums, you know, like Benny's, you know, Plugs I Met and shit. It's got like six songs. It's not an album, man. It's fucking, that's an EP and shit, but, um, but dope shit though, man. I really enjoyed this. Good stuff. Uh, we got some more Crime Apple, DJ Muggs, Medallo. This fucking bangers, man. DJ Muggs just had an outstanding year again. He dropped four albums, um, with four different MCs and, uh, <sighs> Fuck, man. Just all of them were great, man. He had a great year. Like, DJ Muggs is just... He's hes always been amazing. But, man, his output in the last, like, two, three years has been ridiculous of projects. Very different sounding from project to project, too, with, you know, Crime Apple to, you know, Makami to Ido to the God Fahim and shit like that. Like, just so many great projects, man. But this is good. This is really good. Can't go wrong with that. I actually missed a couple of the projects. Um... The God Fahim one really pisses me off. I ended up missing out on that one because that shit is just like, they're gone. If you don't get them on Soul Assassin, they fucking gone, man. Oh, look at that shit. Holy man. I hate these fucking slimline things. Mike Bless. Uh, what is the name of the Mike Bless album? I can't. I don't even think it's even written on here. I can't remember. But Mike Bless. A cat that I came across this year, I didn't really know much about. I heard a couple tracks from him and so I decided to check out the album and I was like holy shit man this is actually really fucking dope man this guy kills this shit 
he does have Chino XL on here. Uh, most of the production, I don't really know a whole lot about. Uh, Planet Asia's got a feature on here also, but it's um, it's some fucking dope hip hop, man. It's just it's really dope. I wouldn't say it's like, I guess it's kind of conscious and shit. It's it's got some up more a little bit more up tempo tracks and stuff. It's not like strictly you know, you know that hard '90s boom bap and shit. It's more new sounding to be honest, but uh, it's really good, man. I really enjoyed this record, man. Good shit. Uh, then we got the Choosy and Exile album. I'm a big fan of Exile's production. You know, he's done some great records with Blue, of course. I uh, wasn't really overly familiar with Choosy's um, as an MC. I mean, I, I knew who he was and stuff, but I hadn't really heard a whole lot. So, you know, but he's interesting. He's interesting. I think um, I think the highlight on here probably is Ex Exile's beats and shit, man. Um, you got Vashon on here and stuff. Show the back, but like try reading that handwriting. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But cool record though, man. It's got a really good vibe to it, man. Really good vibe. And speaking of Milano, The Believers double album, book one and book two, the prologue and epilogue. Here's the complete track listing and production lineup. So it's pretty much handled by mostly DITC Productions. As you can see, showbiz is all over the place. Uh, Buck Wild did a track on here. I think Lord Finesse did one. T Ray did a bunch on the second album. That's pretty much the majority of the of the production on here. But it's solid, man, for a double disc. You don't see a lot of people drop in double disc albums today. It just doesn't happen. It seems like albums have gotten a lot shorter and shorter throughout uh, you know the last few years, especially where everyone thinking these six, seven track albums that are under twenty minutes are albums. Those are EPs. I don't know. I guess I'm just really old school. I don't know. Fucking Kanye. I, I swear I started that shit. Uh, but yeah, this is solid, man. There's some there's some remixes and stuff on there too, but it's really fucking solid. I enjoy the shit out of that. Good stuff. I love DITC. I've always been a big fan. Milano's awesome. Getting into the Digipacks here some more. Those are kind of like the shorter ones. I have them separated because I have everything stacked, and if I have everything mixed, the stacks don't stack. You know, you, know, you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, Freddie Gibbs, uh, Madlib, Bandana. Uh, what can I say, man? This album is ridiculously good. It's Freddie Gibbs is dope. Madlib kills the beats on here. They're a great combination. They're an interesting combination because I've even heard Freddie Gibbs say that, you know, they're very polar opposites. And I can see that, man, because Madlib is kind of a dork. You know, he's he's very much into video games and a whole pile of other shit. And Freddie Gibbs, I don't think is like that. <laughs> it's just, but you know, polar opposites attract, and they make good. They make really good music, man. This is another great project from these two, and I hope they keep doing albums. Um, which I'm sure they're going to because, you know, this this seemed to be such a hot seller everywhere. I, everyone I talked to was like, man, that new Freddie Gibbs is, Gibbs is amazing. It's kind of funny, actually, how, you know, it almost seems like crossover shit because people don't even understand or even know who Madlib is. He was picking up this album that I was associating with. I'm like, I love Freddie Gibbs. Who the fuck is this Madlib cat? Um, dope album. Got to stop talking so much. This video is going to, like, be three hours long. Uh, mathematic Realism. Uh, this I put this in here because it's got released this year. It's more or less an album that he's kind of recorded over the last 20 years. I don't think a lot of the stuff was released before. So it does say from 99 to 2019, but I, as far as I know, like I don't remember any of the stuff actually being released. So I think that he does have a little bit of write-up saying that you know he was recording this album for like the last 20 years kind of thing. And I'm like, that's crazy because he's dropped albums in this time. Uh, Canadian MC, if, I don't know if I mentioned that, but Mathematic... Um, He's done some really good work back in the day and shit, but I highly re recommend Mathematics. This was a good project, man. I was really kind of surprised because I'm like, a 20-year span between 1999 and, 19 and 2019 is, is, a, is a lot of different eras and sounds in there and stuff, but this sounds very cohesive, which, you know, I can't complain. Another Canadian MC, man. Legitimate. All produced by Rex Sessions. Uh, only built for human beings. This is a fucking amazing album. I actually don't really know a whole lot about Legitimate or Rex Sessions. Uh, all I know is this is, this album could have been recorded in the 90s. It wasn't. It's it's newly recorded, but and I and I have the sneaky suspicion that these guys recorded this analog too because the vocals, beats, it just sounds like a very analog beat or album. Um, it, it's it's straight 90s sound and boom bap. That's exact. If you're into that shit, man, definitely give this one a shot. It's fucking awesome. It, it bangs. Some of the mastering's a little bit off, and it's kind of ironic. And I don't know if they did this purposely, but there is the third track on here is called "Turn It Up." And the song is mastered really low. I don't know if they did this purposely. Like, you got to turn this shit up. Like, it's kind of like this joke. I don't know. 
but I thought that was kind of interesting, man. It does have a bunch of features from Ghost of Misery on here. Theology 3 is on here, some Canadian shit, man. So if you're down with Canadian hip-hop, you probably know what I'm talking about there. But uh, again, man, if you know a little bit about legitimate erect sessions, let me know. I, I never honestly looked too much into it. I just, I heard a snippet off this album and I just like, holy fuck, man. Like, that sounds legitimate, man. <laughs> um, yeah, really good stuff. Good boom bap. Awesome. Uh, then we got uh, Flea Lord and 38 Special uh, with Loyalty or Death. Um, I think, if, you know, a lot of the album covers you'll see this. I know this actually comes in two different... This sometimes is on the front kind of thing. I would say this is more of an EP. There's nine tracks on here. There's only six songs. And this thing runs like 18 minutes. Like, it's ridiculously short. It's so good, though. Like, 38 Special does a great job with the beats on here, in my opinion. He's actually featured on a track, too. We got Terminology on here also. But, man, I swear, you blink, this shit is over, man. It's fucking over. Very disappointing in that aspect, but music-wise, I really enjoyed it, man. I thought it was really good stuff. So, uh, you know, this whole kind of crew, 38 Special, and all these guys are putting out so many projects and stuff. I just wish they were a little bit longer. It's been kind of a kind of a bummer for me a little bit, man. But good shit. I enjoyed it. Speaking of short projects, fucking Stu Bangas and Ill Bill. Um... Man, dude, this thing with like it's disappointing in the fact that it's so short. There's 10 tracks on here, there's like seven songs. Every song has a feature. It's pretty much Gore-Tex on every song. Vinny, Vinny Paz on a song, and Slane's on a track, Snack the Ripper's on a track too. Uh Stu Bang's beats are dope. Uh Ill Bill, of course, kills it. I love all the material. The artwork's amazing. Like this actually it's one of my favorite artworks I've seen in a while. These kind of cartoon kind of you know uh Marvel type things, DC type comic book covers and shit are actually becoming a thing again, which is kind of cool. But good stuff, man. Cannibal Hulk. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, what do we got here, man? We got Blue and Ono, oh a long red hot. I hate this album title. A long red hot Los Angeles summer night. Fuck you. Think if I could fucking remember that shit. Uh, of course, yeah. Ono oh on the beats on here. Uh, Blue um, doing some MC and actually. I think Ono actually raps on here too. Yeah, he raps on here. A um, lot of fucking features. Uh, yeah, Ono's on a couple tracks on here. Um, but he mostly does the beats on here, which is actually kind of interesting because he did, Ono just put out an album with Madlib called The Professionals, which came out in 2020. And uh, Madlib does all the beats and Ono does all the rapping. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but Blue, man, I, man, Blue again, killing it, man, this year. He's just putting out so many projects. Oh, no, the same thing, putting out a lot of different projects and shit. But I thought there was some pretty cool stuff on here. What's the song? I think it's, is it Pop Shots? I don't, oh, man, I can't remember the track on here, man. But um, I believe it's got uh, a sample from the Beyond on there. So if you guys are familiar with the Fulci film. But, yeah, some good beats on here. I really like it. Uh, we got Gangstar, one of the best yet. Um, I fucking love this, man. I thought it was really good. I mean, the biggest complaint I kept hearing from people was that they wanted more Guru. But, I mean, you have to understand what Primo went through to get these verses. He picked the best of the best, made what he could. I think the features worked out great. And I really like what he did with the features here. He didn't try to, like, you know, get everybody that's hot at the moment and shit like that. And, and kind of create an album around you know, the popularity of MCs today and stuff like that. He got the Gangstar Foundation on here, man. He got MOP, who are affiliates, you know, and stuff. Of course, Group Home's on here, man. J. Rue the Damager, man. Um, Big Shug's on here. Freddie Fox. You know, we got everybody. You got features from Talib Kweli's on here. Uh, J. Cole does a track, Family, Family and Loyalty, which I thought was interesting. It ended up being the first single because Primo explains why it became the first single. He didn't want it to be. J. Cole thought it was a good idea. Turned out good that way, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but man, the song Lights Out with M.O.P. on here is just fucking fire. I love the whole record, except for probably Get Together with Neo. Neo, I'm not actually a big fan of that song, but um, all, overall, man, it's really damn solid, man. Primo kills the beats, and I think the features are on point, so. Uh, Epic Beard Man. Now, this is an album, I didn't, I didn't even know these guys were a thing. Uh, this group right here is Sage Francis and B. Nolan. B. Dolan. And is it B. Dolan? Yeah. Um, I don't really know much about the cat anyways, but uh, so I, I was a little bit skeptic going into this because the last couple Sage Francis albums have been pretty whack, pretty fucking, pretty terrible emo shit. And this is like some straight fucking hard hip hop, man. The beats are banging right throughout this, man. They just kill the rhymes. They're back and forth on this. It's really good, man. 
Uh, we got some slug on here, blue raspberry on a track. Eli's on another one. Not so many features, but really solid shit, man. Just just some good hip hop. Just some really really good hip hop, man. I love how they do the epic beard, man, as like an EPMD logo. That's fucking dope. But good record, man. I mean, if you heard about this and you're not a fan of Sage Francis, and I don't under, I, I totally understand if you're not. Um, because I lost interest in that guy years ago too. But man, this is a good album. Really good album. Uh, Diabolic and Vanderslice. Uh, collision. 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 Uh, dope, man. Dope. Again, man. I wish this shit was longer. There's like 11 tracks on here. You do get the instrumentals. Uh, there's an intro and an outro. So there's only like nine tracks on here. You got some features from uh, Nems is on here. DJ Revolution, my favorite DJ of all time. Man. I love Revolution. Um, but man, it's it's really good. It's really good. I just wanted more. I just wanted more Diabolic because he's a dope MC. Vanderslice is such an underrated producer in my opinion. I think he, everything that he does is really good, man. Uh, I just wish he would put out more work, you know. And I like Vanderslice as a person because he's very much like me. Like he. He'll just speak his mind about anything, and he gives no fucks. Um, who's listening to it or whatever? But uh, <laughs> so he's kind of he's kind of funny. But yeah, good album, man. Really enjoyed that shit. Make sure this lose these albums over here. Uh, Danny Brown, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, as you guys probably know if you've watched my channel, you know I'm not a fan of Danny Brown uh, for the most part. Um, I have liked some of his projects. I did like the Black and Brown album he did with uh, with Black Milk and stuff. But his albums in between, man, I can't get over the voice and the and the, the flow and just the weirdness. He's just odd to me. Uh, he kind of settled himself down on this one a little bit. Got some really interesting production on here. Uh, there's like three tracks produced by Q-Tip. But I thought overall the whole production lineup was good on here. Um, Danny Brown just seemed to kind of calm his voice. And he wasn't as no he wasn't annoying to me. This was a great album. This is really, really good shit. And it's kind of funny because I've talked to people that are fans of Danny Brown and they don't like this album because they like the weird, odd, strange Danny Danny Brown. So I get that. I get that. You know, if you're going to change up styles and do things like that, it's you're going to have something for everybody, I guess. But uh, but this is really good, man. It just really surprised me. I, I said many times years ago that the only bad thing about Your Old Drew's album, Pax, was the fucking Danny Brown version. That it just doesn't fit in the album. That's just me. Good album, though. Really enjoyed it. Uh, new DJ Shadow, man. I always get excited when DJ Shadow puts out shit because I love his beats, man. He's a dope, interesting producer. He always does cool shit. Um, so this is an interesting project because there's two... two. It's a double album. The first album is, uh, you know, just instrumentals, uh, beats that he'd done and stuff. And then he changed it up on the second disc and he produced with MCs. And there's the MC lineup. I don't know if that's going to show up on there or not. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's... I think it's trying to focus in on my face the fuck out of their moods i don't know if you guys can see that but um he did do his track on here called systematic with nos that came out actually quite a long time ago but you know there's features from nos and feral Monch on here inspected deck ghostface killer raekwon de la soul gift of, gab, gift of gab uh latif um who else run the jewels is on here uh fucking rockwell markwell knuckles uh sam here yeah so i mean fuck man it, it's pretty good, man. It's actually really good. I had a lot of fun with this, man. I love the Run the Jewels song. And Systematic, I think it's pretty cool for Nas to be rhyming over beats like that. It's pretty pretty different. Uh, Drone Warfare with Nas and Feral Munch. How often do you get to hear Nas and Feral Munch on a song? It's pretty crazy. Uh, your old Drew, uh, trans <laughs> I was going to say transportation. Um, it wasn't even close. This is the first release of the year for him. Yeah, transform or transportation came up right after this one. So this is the first of three albums that dropped in 2019. Uh, the last one just being a digital only. I know the physical's coming out. I think in March and stuff. So, but your old Droog man, in my opinion, one of the best MCs in the game. One of the best underground MCs. This guy is not getting the full legitimate uh, props that he should be getting because he's he's a, he's amazing. He's great with punchlines. He's great. He's just really smart on the mic. He chooses great beats. He's got great production all over the place. Um I mean really what can I say man? He got Doom and Makami on here, man. I think the beats are great. I think I already said that. I'm getting repetitive. And a Rock Marciano's on here. Uh but yeah, great features, great beats, great rhymes. It's just it's got a great feel to it, man. It's it's good, man. And this isn't even the this isn't this is probably the least best out of the three year old Droog albums and it's fantastic this year we got some brand new Jason yeah man kill ya boss boss and MC I, I was shocked to see this man um 
it is saying 2018. I believe this physical, this actually came out in 2019, though. Uh, so kind of cool, man. You know, he's got some production from uh, from Marco Polo on here, Static Selecta. Uh, who else is on here? Alatola is on here. Confidence, which is fucking dope. Um, of course, you got, you know, Rex, Ed OG. You got to have Ed OG on here. Stu Bangers makes appearance on here, but... Good shit, man. I actually really enjoyed this, man. Uh, Jay Sean, he's not like one of my favorite rappers, you know, but I like the whole thing about him, man. He puts together hard albums and shit, and I, I, I dig it, man. I like the shit he did with DJ Revolution years ago, man. That, that was dope, too. Uh, we got some uh, some cool Keith called Keith. You know, you can't you can't go through a whole year without, without having a cool Keith album or release or something like that. This is a weird fucking album, man. This is really strange, man. Okay, he's got four features on this record he's got paul wall psycho less j rue the damage and be real um you know i'm not a fan of paul wall at all but that shit he did with static selected this year where paul wall is rapping over static selected beats and actually like got real lyrical and shit on it. it's actually pretty good man i, I won't say I, I gotta say man i gotta give him props uh the 95 cell song was uh psycho less man i think psycho less actually produced that too it's so strange sounding um oh yeah psycho less produced the whole album that's right and uh that's right fuck i'm having brain farts but yeah no so that song it's just like really really strange sounding man um but yeah some of the beats on here are very i don't know what the fuck man i obviously psycho less was kind of getting into cool keys realm of reality and beat wise and stuff because he went out of his box and did some really strange beats on here uh, <laughs> it's crazy i gotta re-listen so i haven't listened to it in a while but i just remember being like odd to listen to because uh, I'm thinking Psycho Less, I'm thinking Beat Nuts. Even some of the stuff they did in the 2000s was pretty dope and shit. But uh, we got Nasa Lost Tapes 2. I really enjoyed this, man. I thought this was really solid. Uh, for the most part, I think there was a couple hooks on here that, you know... And it, it, it honestly, it feels a little bit long-winded, 16 tracks, which is kind of funny. I'm just complaining about everything being so short. But this one, at times, actually did feel a little bit long. I think some of the songs might have been too long. I, I can't quite remember. Uh... But this is good stuff, man. I mean, if this is the type of Nas that we're going to get, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, way better than the shit he did with Kanye. I thought that that project was just, like, not good. Um, but, yeah, this is good. Nas Lost Tapes too. At least we're getting that shit, you know? Uh, Benny, The Plugs I Met. Uh, again, I don't know. I don't... If you guys don't, if you guys consider this an album, let me know down in the comments below. I consider it to be an EP because there's seven tracks on here. One of them is an intro. So there's six songs. I mean, of course, it does Crowns for Kings with uh, with Black Thought, which is absolutely amazing. It's got 38 Special and Jada Kiss on a track. Conway's, of course, on here. Uh, production from The Alchemist, DJ Shea, uh, Derringer. Uh, the track with Kanye is actually, with uh, with Conway, is produced by Derringer and Beat Butcher, which is dope. Uh, Derringer's just so fucking dope, dude. The Derringer beats on the Griselda album. Holy fuck, man. Just silly man but man crowns for kings with black thought that's got to be one of the tracks of the year man but again my opinion this is an ep this is not an album cool project though i enjoyed it uh dj mugs makami uh i don't even want to pronounce the name of this album because i just sound stupid when i say spanish words i don't know yeah um i enjoyed this probably turned it, it probably turned out to be my least favorite of the four dj mug produced albums this year and i really enjoy this too man uh, at first i liked it more than ito then the ito really kind of grew on me and then um crying apple came out and i was like okay that's really sick and then the goth he man jesus christ man it's like it's like he just kept getting better with albums this year so but dj mugs absolutely killing it man i'm glad i actually got one of these because they just seem to be going like crazy uh, Sean Price, Small Professor. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize that actually this is not like a makeshift album. Uh, Sean Price and Small Professor were actually recording shit together in the studio at the same time. Uh, obviously, Small Professor, you know, put a little bit extra into this to finish the album, but they were recording a lot of the stuff together. So that's actually really interesting. Of course, you got Rock on here. Can't have, you know, some Sean Price shit without Rock. Uh, cool Chris, DJ Revolution, um, AG, the corners on here, Guilty Simpson, your old Droog, Illa G, uh, which, you know, Sean Price actually did a record with Illa G too. Um, the Read the Lost Causes on here. Some really good features, man. The beats are actually really dope. This is, it's a dope, it, it, you know, it's a good um, project. But, uh, yeah, cool artwork too. I like the artwork. Uh, we got Mad Child's Demons. Um, 
this is more of the same of the recent Mad Child. I wish he'd go back to just du straight Dungeon and Dragons and shit. I get that he's sober, and I'm fucking happy for him. Uh, I've met Mad Child many, many times in my life. Um, living in Vancouver, I used to, I got to see him in, you know, in the good old days in the late '90s, early 2000s of the Swollen Members when they were coming up and shit, and they used to perform all the time. Uh, his real drunk, shitty days, actually. Uh, he got bad though in the middle 2000s, but um, no, he, I'm proud of him. He's sober now. He's doing these records. He's proud of it. You know, he keeps rapping about it. But now this is like probably four albums in a row that he's really been stressing this fact. I just like him just to just to do another album. You know. Um, maybe just a one producer, one MC album, like, kind of like what he did with the Evidence record a few years ago. Uh, just kind of maybe not make it so personal, maybe just get back to some some Dungeons and Dragons shit. I don't know. But there is a couple cool tracks in here, but there is some bad ones too. You know, it's what you're going to get with the, with the Mad Child album. So, But overall, it's not like horrendous or anything. Uh, whoa, that thing seems to be stuck together. Uh, Viral the Virus, From Jersey to Germany. Uh, this is really good, man. Um, I think that some of the stuff on here... Oh, yeah, it's the second disc. Yeah, there's remixes and stuff on the second. Okay, so the first disc here, uh, produced by the Snow Goons, and I believe the second disc... I'm not sure if they did all the remixes on there or not. I'd actually have to cross-reference that right now. Uh, but there is a lot of remixes. So I think it's a lot of songs that he had done before that are kind of re revived by the Snow Goons and shit. But this is really good, man. There's a lot of good shit on here. Um, yeah, tons of remixes, man, but, but good shit though, man, double disc, um, so, two, two albums, Snow Goon shit, can't really go wrong, really, Snow Goons, but yeah, that was, that was good stuff, uh, definitely one of my favorites of the year, um, Nolan the Ninja, was sporty, Def, what a great vibe on this album, just great rhymes, great beats, just, a, the overall vibe is just awesome, man, I, I feel like when I listen to this album, this guy, it rips by, I always have fun with it, it's good shit, man. Um, if you don't know who Nolan the Ninja is, man, check this out. He's dropped a lot of fucking, like, digital-only, maybe kind of free-releases and stuff. But, um, yeah, sporty. Good shit. Really enjoyed that. Uh, Core Mega's... Uh, this is just called Mega, I think. Yeah, just Mega EP. Uh, five songs plus the instrumentals on here. Good, man. It's Core Mega. Got a feature from Havoc on here. Um... You know, it's Core Mega. I wish Core Mega would do another album. It's been, a, it seems like it's been way too long since Mega's actually put out a full length album. It's been a few years. I'm thinking, unless I'm tripping. No, it's been a few years, anyways. But yeah, I'd like to see a new full length from Mega because I was, I, I've always been a fan of Core Mega. Uh, Snow Goons Infantry, another one of their producer compilation albums. I have to say, as being a big Snow Goons fan, I'm a little bit disappointed with this one. This one, you know, again, it's really long. It's like, you know, it's like 80 minutes long, 21 tracks. It's got all the usual suspects on here. Everybody, you've got Shaheem on here, which was crazy. Uh, Crime Apple to Ill Bill Nem Signature, uh, signature uh, Nocturnal. Fuck it. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's just like a million features on here, as usual. Um, but I don't think this is like the best. Man, that is just not. Oh, there we go. There, it's focusing now. Um focus motherfucker yeah i don't know I, I just don't feel like this is the snow goons best work that they've ever done but it's good it, it's still very listenable it's good i don't know uh we got some mers here uh what's in it? this is all produced by ninth wonder and the soul council beats are amazing on here um the illit is dead and the odyssey is over that's the name of the album it's, it's got a long title i can't remember cool album cover too man i really like that but yeah the beats on here are awesome man you know mirrors has been hit and miss with me for the last few albums like he really does kind of hit and miss you know like he did that captain california album i think it was on strange music and that album was trash bangs man but then he dropped two really solid albums this year uh he dropped a good one last year like he's always been kind of doing that but his output of music is just ridiculous man so there's the lineup of that I actually have the other one sitting right here. He did another album with uh, The Grouch, Mirrors and The Grouch. Uh, production from The Grouch produced on here. DJ Fresh. Um, who else did production? Ant from Atmosphere did a beat on here. Brady Watt um, actually produced the last two tracks on here. Fuck, man. Dude, be nice and play Freebird, man. Brady Watt. He's so fucking dope, dude. The bass lines are just ridiculous, man. It, it, it just really just shine on the track man it's amazing but cool stuff man I, I thought that record was dope too uh we got tobacco and aesop rock who are tobacco um a really really strange 
sounding album from Tobacco. He did all the beats on here. Of course, Aesop does all the rhymes. Aesop comes correct on here. But it's so strange to me because I swear the last like four or five songs on this album all have the same sample taken from uh, Rats, Bruno Mattai's Rats that came out in like 1984, 83, 84. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that movie and the music from that movie, I swear Tobacco just kept chopping that shit up and made like four beats out of it. It's really fucking strange, man. I've never heard someone do that before. A lot of people probably wouldn't recognize those samples because if you're not familiar with Italian horror cinema and shit, but I love it, man. I know a lot of people don't like Aesop Rock out there. I know Aesop has a lot of fans out there. I'm a big fan of Aesop. I think he's just incredible. Uh, cool album, though, man. Really enjoyed that. It's just crazy weird. Your old Droog with Transportation. Great concept album. I'm glad he did this. It's just so fucking good, man. Um, I'm trying to remember all tracks produced by him. Oh, yeah, never mind. Never mind. But, yeah, this is just a really interesting con concept about, you know, moving around, you know, transportation and shit like that. Um, but, man, dude, this just, like, hits. If you listen to the lyrics on this album, it's just absolutely, like, ridiculous. Um how clever he is he's super clever really really clever just i could listen to your old droog all day man another awesome album from him then we got larange and jeremiah J with violence uh this is their second or third album they put out together i don't know larange is honestly one of the most underrated producers um doing shit right now i never really hear his name mentioned a lot but he's put out quite a few projects in the last few years on Mellow Music Group and things like that. I think this is on Mellow Music Group too. Yeah, it was. But great stuff, man. Jeremiah J is not like one of my more favorite MCs out there, but he does hold his own pretty well. The beats are definitely the highlight here, but awesome. Really, really good record though. Whoa. Uh, Ross Goss is Soul on Ice 2. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I, you know, I think I didn't enjoy it as much as I probably should because I'm a big Ross Goss fan. I think there is some hooks on here, maybe a few beats and stuff that I'm just kind of, I'm a little bit off put, but, but it never amazes me like how awesome Ross Goss is on the mic. He even, he even had a lyric book that he sold and I think he did a couple different runs of it because it sold out the first time and shit. I actually missed it both times. I should have grabbed it, but, but Soul on Ice 2, man, nevertheless, good album. Um, he does have a track on here with Pete Rock, which I thought was really interesting. Pretty cool stuff. Track on here with Diamond D did production on here. Green Lantern. Shit like that. It's got a song called LL Cool J featuring Snoop Dogg. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to start losing these albums over here. Uh, People Under the Steers, Stairs' last album, Sincerely the P. Ugh, one of the saddest days in history for me in hip-hop history, I swear. Knowing that these cats are retiring because I'm such a big People Under the Stairs fan. And, uh, you know, they definitely did not disappoint on this album. It's not their best album, but it is really solid. And for a group that, spanning 20 years, to put out 10 solid albums, everything that these guys have done has been fantastic. They never had a miss in my entire, or in their entire um, discography, in my opinion. One of the most consistent groups in hip-hop history, and a lot of people don't even know about these guys, which is insane. How many groups out there have had 10 consecutive hit albums? None. People on the stairs is the only group. Um... Good shit, man. It's just people on the stairs. If you're familiar, check it out. It's amazing. Uh, Chris, Chris Oric, uh, out to sea. Uh, AKA Red Pill. Um, I don't know why he changed his name to. I think I'm pretty sure that's his real name. But I am just so familiar with Red Pill. But good shit though, man. You know he's a dope MC and he always has good beat choices and shit. Like he's kind of underrated a little bit. Uh, did this come out? Where the fuck? Was, yeah, this is on Mel Music Group too. This album came out of fucking nowhere for me this year, man. Like literally nowhere. I didn't even know this was out, and I was searching for something else, and this came up in the sidebar, and I was like, eight dollars, brand new. I was like, when did that come out? I'm like, 2019. Eight bucks for this on Prime. I was like, damn. So good shit, man. I enjoyed it. Retropolitan, Sky Zoo, my man Pete Rock. Gotta love my my Pete Rock tat. Whatever you guys can see the Pete Rock there. Uh, obviously is like a god to me. Um, you know, I've always had this relationship with Sky Zoo to be very odd because I don't even think that made sense. But Sky Zoo has always been one of those MCs I love, but at the same time, he kind of bores me. I, I know that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it, there's something about his voice and just his delivery. It's almost too smooth that I, I kind of like tune out and I start to listen to beats because he always has great beat choices. I think Pete Rock did a great job with the beats on here. I believe he produced this on the SB12 too. I believe some of these beats, at least some of them were. 
I, I, I can't quite remember. A couple cool features P-Rock is on a track. Uh, we got Styles P on here. Um, and then, of course, you got, uh, you know, the Griselda crew, Westside Gun, Conway, and Benny the Butcher. And Eli on a track, Eastern Conference All-Stars. That's cool. Dope record. Can't go wrong. Apollo Brown, uh, Sincerely Detroit. Now, this is an interesting project. 21 songs on here, over 50 MCs. I think there's like 55 or 56 different MCs, all from Detroit. So, hence the title, Sincerely Detroit. Uh, really good stuff here. I think it's way too long to listen to. I wish they had a, he had to cut this down. I understand what he was going for, have 50 MCs, things like that. It, it's a cool concept for a record, you know, representing Detroit, you know, 50 plus MCs, and none of them are Eminem, <laughs> uh, which is cool, man. Chris Ordick is actually on here, too. Um, of course, Royce makes an appearance on here, but lots of great stuff, man. One Below. I was I was happy to see One Below have a feature on here. That's really dope. It just goes on and on and on. Some of the MCs aren't really the greatest, in my opinion. I think the beats outshine the MCs. So it does bog it down a little bit, but again, you can never go wrong with Apollo Brown beats. He's just so fucking solid. You know, the, he's like ACDC in a way. The second you put on a fucking song that's produced by Apollo Brown, you know it's him. It's crazy. It's like Primo, man. It's got a very distinct signature i don't know why i used acdc as a an example i should have said primo um but clear soul force is on here good shit though good shit i don't know if you guys can if that's gonna focus or not i mean give that a pause if you want to read that but yeah good shit all right so that's it for the digi how long we into 41 minutes that, that's it i'm ripping through i'm ripping through okay let's get into the jewel cases again stacked uh nems gorilla monsoon absolutely fucking love this album this shit is banger after banger i love this fuck your face straight 90s hardcore boom bap hip-hop nems don't give no fucks um your shit's garbage man i love this record very very skin skimpy on the features conway's on a track uh split uh split split spit jams is on a track and you know it's really an alto and alexi leon a couple tracks but uh Man, dude, there's some dope shit on here. Just it bangs from top to bottom. I love this album. Fucking Nems kills it on this shit. Even the mixtape he dropped after this, which is Gorilla Monsoon 2 or whatever. Awesome, man. Good shit, man. Good shit. People without shoes and jazz spastics. Fuck yeah, man. Like really, man. I love the jazz spastics production. People without shoes. I'm a big fan of uh, all of his work and shit, man. He's done. He's put out lots of great albums they've fully got album releases on his website and shit you can actually get this on 5420 records which along with his other albums and shit like that so green street crazy crazy great jazzy hip-hop here man you can't go wrong with this one of my favorite albums of the year hands down i think it's a great combination Zarface, uh what the fuck's the name of this album the odds are against us yeah i flipped the album artwork there um this is I heard from someone that this may have been like a compilation of unreleased tracks from the previous albums. I don't know if that was true. I could never actually follow that up. At times, it kind of feels like that because the beats are so different from track to track on this. But then then again, it is Zarface. I mean, you expect things to be a little bit different from time to time. So, um, yeah, man, I thought this was really solid, though. You know, it's Zarface. It's fucking Zarface, man. Um, 7L, Esoteric, Spectre Deck. Oh, yeah. Rusty Jux Magma, all produced by Tone Spliff. Man, my nose is itchy. This this was ridiculous this year. Uh, Rusty Jux dropped three amazing projects last year. This one being my favorite of the three. Uh, I love Tone Spliff's beats. Rusty is one of my favorite, favorite MCs, probably since 2000. Uh, probably, well, when he come on? Late, later 90s, I believe he was featured on stuff. But, you know, ever since he's become, like, really consistent with the stuff, man, he's just... I love his voice. I love his punchlines. You know, he's just, he's got that ruggedness. He always brings it. Magma, great record. Um, the new Brother Ali album, which I can't even remember what the fuck it's even called right now. Secrets and Escapes, all produced by Evidence. This is what you get. There's no artwork, and you get this little sticker on the back. That's it for the release. I know, I didn't lose the artwork. This comes like this. I'm trying to pull some Kanye West shit here, man. I don't know what the fuck's up with that, but... Uh, I was cheap as fuck though, man. Represent Rhyme Sayers. Uh, I really enjoyed this, man. Uh, the last couple of Brother Ali records have been kind of misses for me. He got a little bit too preachy. I wasn't really feeling the ant beats a whole lot on those. It's more about the rhymes, so though. I think the beats were okay, but it was more about just the the preachiness was getting to me a little bit. I, there's only so much you can handle. Um, but I think he toned it down on here, and evidence his beats were amazing. This was a good project, man. Really good stuff. 
uh, Diabolic, The Disconnect, um, definitely not as good as the album he did with Vanderslice, uh, Collision. Uh, but this one has its moments. It does have a couple tracks in here I didn't even really care for. It felt like it was kind of rushed, you know, at times. But the artwork's really dope. And it's Diabolic, man. If you're a fan of Diabolic, I do recommend it, though. Uh, Common with Love. Let Love. That's right. Let Love. Pretty much every song on here actually has love in the title, too. So it's it's a little bit corny. Um... I'm a big fan of Common. This is not my favorite Common record by any be by any means. I was really shocked to see um, that like even Swiss Beats was on. It's so weird. It's just weird to me. Uh, it's not bad by any means. I, I do give him props for still making records like this. Kind of comes out of the woodwork, kind of out of the blue, really, and puts out an album. Because Common's, you know, in, in the in the acting game and shit, but it's still a decent album. I'm actually honestly gonna have to revisit that one. I haven't listened to it in a while, so I can't fully judge it. So. Uh, Pete Rock, Return of the SP-12. Uh, instrumental record. Of course, these are all beats on the SP-12. This is fantastic, man. Really, really fantastic stuff. Uh, it's Pete Rock, man. You gotta pick it up, man. Dope beats. Dope album cover. Good shit. SP-12, man. SP-12. Onyx Presents 100 Mad. This is kind of like a group effort, I guess. So it's saying 100 Mad is Fredro Star, Sticky Fingers, Snack the, Ra Snack the Ripper. Uh, make them pay. Snow Goon, Sick Flow, J Nice, MBS, Larceny, Left Lane, Died On, and Dope DoD. So it's kind of a compilation of those guys all on here, mixed with different production. Like the Audible Doctor even produces a track on here, which the Alchemist produces on here. Snow Goons, actually, Audible Doctor does a couple tracks. Things like that. It's it's okay, actually. It, it's actually not bad. It just it has kind of this like army of the pharaohs type feel to it, but obviously not as good. I don't know. Um, there was a couple decent moments on this, but yeah. Uh, Rick Ross, uh, Port of Miami two. Um, you know it's weird, man. I became I I always used to say I was never a Rick Ross fan because I was never really into <laughs> Rick Ross. I guess. Uh, yeah, man. Like I I had. A buddy of mine gave me a bunch of Rick Ross albums back in the day. I never really gave him a shot. And I think this year, someone's like, dude, you should actually check out Rick Ross, man. So I'm like, started with the albums that I that I had. And I was like, this guy's actually fucking not bad, man. I was like, Jesus, I've been sleeping on this guy for years. I know this one very much sticks out in this whole thing. But you know what? Fuck it, man. Rick Ross, he's pretty dope, man. Uh, Miami, Port of Miami 2, which is, of course, the uh, sequel to his first album. Uh, definitely not my favorite one, man. I've went through pretty much all his albums. This is definitely not one of my more favorite albums by Rick Ross, but man, he does put out some pretty solid shit. I'm actually quite surprised. I'm really kind of surprised, so. I'm glad that, you know, I stopped fucking being the elitist moods I've always been. <laughs> no, I've never really been, but I sometimes I just kind of get close shuttered and I don't check out the certain things if it's in the mainstream. I don't know why. Uh, what do we got here, man? We got, uh, Clever One and BBC Darnie. Straight 90s boom bap shit here, man. Uh, all produced by BBC Darney. Uh, clever one. He's dope, man. He's dope. Short project. Uh, 10 tracks. Yu Mang's actually on a track on here. Good shit, man. Good shit. If you're a fan of uh, BBC Darney, you know what you're getting yourself into, man. It's it's very influenced by DJ Premier. Vinny Paz, Tragedy Gaddafi, Camouflage Regi Regime. I have really enjoyed this, man. And... I was just waiting for the day that these two guys were going to do a project together, man, because I'm a big fan of Vinny, and I've always been a fan of uh, Intelligent Hoodlum, a.k.a. Tragedy Gaddafi. And Tragedy's turned into this kind of, like, this kind of warfare MC, too. And he always puts out a lot of great projects, and you don't really hear his name mentioned a whole lot, but this is, it's a really interesting project, man. I thought it, I thought it fucking banged, man. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Sons of Man, The Rebirth. Yes, a brand new Sons of Man album. I was shocked. I thought this was going to be like a compilation, but this is actually like a brand new Sons of Man album, um, which, you know, is actually pretty decent, man. It's not great, but it's, you know, it's definitely worthy of having in your collection here, man. I was really shocked to see everyone back, man. Killer Priest, Prodigal Son, Hell Reza, Heaven Reza, <laughs> and uh, 60 Second Assassin. Oh, man, I just totally just broke my thing. It didn't actually break, but you guys get the picture here. That thing is sliding off. Um, yeah, it was good. It, it definitely had its moments, man. I'm going to have to go back and revisit. I'm kind of a little bit foggy on this one right now, but yeah. I do remember it being pretty decent, though. Czarface uh, means ghost face. This was solid as shit, man. I really enjoyed this. I thought the beats were so much better than the Doom record on here. 
And I liked the Doom album. It definitely grew on me, but this one just hit right from the start and really enjoyed the shit out of it right from the start. So, um, and Ghostface just honestly sounded amazing on this. On the beats just worked so well for him. Um, Inspected Deck kills it. Uh, Esoteric was phenomenal on that record too. Speaking of Ghostface Killa, we got Ghostface Killas, uh, which I really enjoyed the shit out of this man. Ghostface, you know, for the most part for me, is pretty much all hit you know this guy is probably he's by far the most consistent wu-tang member he puts out the most material with the best albums too but he's got the suspects on here man method man capadonna inspected deck uh we got uh sun god on here solomon childs is on here which is cool to see um master killer shit like that so production was good on here too man i thought it was just overall was uh was great man it was good ghost face stuff man he still is not falling off it's crazy Oh yeah, new Snoop Dogg record. Yes, I picked up. I want to thank me. Man, this album is trippy, man, because I don't know why. I always continue to buy Snoop albums every year. But this album is such a mixed bag of shit, man. It has like some straight 90s gangster wine G-funk shit to like other poppy stuff that he does. But most of this is actually pretty decent. I mean, I know a lot of people watching this aren't probably going to give this a shot, so I'm not going to try and convince you to go and check it out. But... But honestly, dude, I was just like shocked by this, man. You know, Swiss Beats is on here. You know, Slick Rick. Um, but it's a lot better than I was anticipating it to be. It's actually probably one of the better projects he's done in years. Uh, E-40's album, Practice Makes Paper, double disc. Got a huge crack across there. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm a big E-40 fan, man. I buy all his shit. So that's like 35 albums he's put out now that I have. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And the fact that he puts out double albums this late in his career is fucking crazy he's working on this trilogy of albums right now and it's just it's ridiculous what he's doing it's crazy uh and the last few here are just canadian releases uh dj moves his three um compilation record uh there's some pretty good stuff on here man we got some touch on here uh all canadian mcs and shit like that bird of prey makes an appearance on here some pretty good stuff um yeah i was shocked man to see um han solo records actually release this so Hans, big props to Han Solo for releasing this because, you know, I mean, DJ Moose, man, old school guy, but great artwork, man. As you can see, they give me the, the promo stuff. They send them over to me, which is kind of cool because I don't get anything for free usually. Uh, this album right here, Jaws and Touch, man. Uh, this is cool, man. Um, I love the Touch and NATO record that came out years ago, man. The Representatives was fantastic. I think Touch is from Calgary or Edmonton, Calgary. Uh, good stuff, man. You got uh, Ghetto Socks on this record. This was actually pretty dope, man. Good rhymes, good beats and shit. Kind of felt like a kind of a throwback one here. Primal Wins. What's the name of this one? Road Warriors. This is a weird record because it sounds like a Western hip-hop album. If you were, if you took a score from like a Spaghetti Western or any Western type film, put some, you know, hip-hop drums over that and put some rhymes and shit, you get this. That's what you get. You get this album. It's really trippy, man. It, it's actually very unique, very unique. Probably not going to be for everybody, but I really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, Ultra Magnus. Um, yeah, this album right here was very disappointing. I really liked the one he did a couple years back, but definitely not my favorite one from him. Had a couple decent cuts, but overall disappointing. The Mighty Rhino, I did not care for this at all. I thought this was really bad, kind of corny. And it's trippy too, man. He's got Fat Lip on here on a track. And there's another track on here called Fuck Out of Here, which is the best track on the album. Actually, it's probably the one, the only song on here I actually really liked. It's got Adam Bomb, Prince Poe, more or less, Fraction, uh, Hashin, and Skiz on there. But I was couldn't believe to see Prince Poe on a track here, man. So, Mighty Rhino, really trippy. And Mickey O'Brien, this is my drift. I did not get into this either. I just, this alternative hip-hop and shit, I was just like, ah, oh, it's like kind of all over the place. It does have some good features. Got Mindbender on here, and more or less is on here, and Decisive. So there is some decent um, features and stuff, but like the beats, just really, really not for me. So, yeah. Um, so that is it for all the CD albums. I have no idea how many that is. Probably way too fucking many from the year. I'm still under an hour, which is crazy. I got a couple tape releases from last year. Evidence, the Squirrel Tape, Instrumentals, Volume 1. Um, had to pick this up because I think I think there is no CD. It's vinyl and tape, and the vinyl was just like way too much. The shipping was crazy, and I was like, and plus my buddy picked this up at a store, sold it to me, and I got it for cheap. So, um, in the green tape, the green tape. Ooh, if you can even tell that's green, it just does not look as green on the video than it does in my hand. It's like really green. 
And of course, uh, sincerely, the P. I got the package deal with the shirt and the the tape, CD, and vinyl shirt. So I just decided to buy the big package because it's their last album. And I was like, fuck it, I'll support them. I've been supporting them for 20 years. Why not continue on a yellow tape, which I haven't even opened because I listened to the CD and vinyl. So uh, getting into the vinyl, which is the end of this update throwback album here. This is Thrust Past, Present, and Future um, from Smoke on Records out of Germany. This is basically thrust stuff from um, uh, the '90s. It's like he had a he had a vinyl EP release called Past, Present, and Future. I think it was, which is basically side A of this, for the most part. And then side B is a couple of straggler 12-inch singles, and then some like newer stuff that I was unfamiliar with and stuff. But this is pretty cool, man. It's on, it's on red vinyl. I'm not gonna open up these because this video is already way too long. But it's on like red splatter vinyl. You can check my Instagram page if you guys are interested in seeing what it looks like. So. But yeah, that's pretty dope here. I'm just going to switch this over. Just keep some beats going, I guess. If you guys were interested in what we were listening to in the background, that was Marco Polo. NPC Collectibles, unreleased beats from 2002 to 2004. It's just Marco Polo's. Love Marco Polo. Uh, 2019 albums. Uh, the Return, Glad to Mecca and Ill Treats. This is some fucking amazing jazzy boom bap hip hop. I love these cats. This is the second album that they've done together. Um, they put out their first one in 2014, so five years later they did this one. Glad to Mecca has done a couple other kind of MC producer albums in between, but I really like the combination of Ill Treats and Glad to Mecca. Really good shit, man. You got Grand Poob on here, Cycle S actually tells you the features up here anyway, so that's kind of cool. So awesome, man. If you're into jazzy hip hop, man, check out Glad to Mecca, Ill Treats. It's fucking sick. Uh, this is fucking amazing, man. The Legion put out an album this year, man. The fucking Legion. CeeLo Molecules. Chucky Smash. Um. Yeah, dude, it's it's the fucking Legion, dude. You know, I'm so happy that they even did a track on here with with Drez because they'd done tracks back in the day with him and stuff. Of course, Sadat X on here, Beneficence, Droopy Dog. This is really good. I didn't hear anyone talk about this year. I don't know if people just didn't know about this album, but I didn't hear anyone bring this up or talk about this. And it's kind of a shame because this is really good, man. I fucking think it's awesome. Um, then we got uh, Med. Guilty Simpson, Child of the Jungle. You can see all the producers on their Mad Lib. Black Milk, Knots, Kareem Riggins, Apollo Brown. Great production lineup. Um, there it is right there. Med and Guilty Simpson. Good shit, good shit. Really enjoyed this one too. Sorry about the glare, guys. There's not really a whole lot I can do about that, like I said before. Uh, the Dime Piece 2 from Diamond D. I was like, I really enjoy this. I know some people said they weren't really feeling it so much, but I think the I think the production on here was amazing. I'm a big fan of Diamond G. In fact, I'm just like a diehard DITC fan. Everything that anybody from DITC puts out, I'm probably going to pick up because I have to. You know, Legion, of course, being associated with them too and shit. But, um, but yeah, lots of great features on here. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm really just trying to get this video over with because we're pushing like an hour right now. If you guys can see that, there is some Feral Munch on there. I don't know if that's going to... Sorry, again, the glare. But D.I. Um, Diamond... The Diamond Piece 2. Crime Apple and DJ Skiz. Wet Dirt. Man, I love this shit, man. I fucking love this. Album. EP. I don't know what you want to call it. I think it's supposed to be an album, but it's really short. There's like 10 tracks on it, I think. 9 or 10, but... Yeah, Crime Apple, DJ Skiz, <sighs> Crime Apple, crazy year, man. Lots of great projects, man. Lots of great projects, and so many albums that like that I just couldn't get my hands on. I do have, like I said, I have a bunch more coming and stuff from this year, but there was a bunch that just I passed on because of prices. Everything's shipping from Europe now. It's crazy. Smith and Wesson is the all probably their best album since The Shining, really. Maybe the album was pretty good. I like the production on here. Um, it was uh, done by Ninth Wonder, Soul Council, and stuff. So the beats are a lot different than you're really used to, especially in the Duck Down era or in the Realm and shit like that. A lot of people thought it was a little bit soft compared to the Black Moon album. Yeah, def definitely different beats. Definitely different beats. And that's actually a Black Moon album that I had ordered, the CD and vinyl. They canceled my order somehow. I don't know if those things were even shipped. And I, so I pre-ordered the, the CD. It never shipped. So I don't have a copy. I don't know when I'm going to be getting it, but I will get it eventually. 
Uh, the good people. Yeah, man. Good for nothing. Amazing, amazing album. M Ski. Saint. Beats by Saint M Ski. I fucking love M Ski. You got Large Professor on here, Sadat X, Napoleon the Legend, Cella Dwellers. Yeah, man. M Ski, of course, he's super, super down. Um with like Nick Wiz and shit like that. There's a great interview actually on uh, Take a Personal Podcast with the good people from earlier this year. And I, I really hope that people aren't sleeping on this album because this is really good shit. This is some great down to earth, just organic sounding hip hop, man. It's really amazing shit. So give your shit a check on that one, man. Uh, we got Blue blue and Damu, Groundwater. Actually, the vinyl's really nice. It's like this really kind of like awesome blue color. Of course it's blue <laughs> why wouldn't it be blue uh blue and damu groundwater good shit man um it's short it's got eight tracks some of the songs are quite long on here so it actually has like an album feel because it's like long uh but good shit man blue damu i mean you can't really go wrong can you with damu beats man he, he's kind of always killing it uh so i did pick up the vinyl i think these next ones i've already shown the cds but i did pick up the cd and vinyl because sometimes i just get greedy um it wasn't even close uh, oh man, I thought the thing was all fucked up. I hear my kid in the background. Um, your old Drew, good shit, man. We already talked about it earlier. Then I picked up the vinyl for transportation also because I do that sometimes. Um, yeah, your old Drew. And of course, I had to pick up the vinyl for Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib Bandana, which you cannot barely see because the glare is so horrendously bad. Uh, fucking awesome album, man. Really, really great album. Great, great album. I only really buy the albums I love, love. Sincerely, the P, double record. People on the stairs. The vinyl, the albums are awesome. The records, I should say. This one's color too. This is actually pretty cool, man. Uh, the Aesop Rock, Tobacco, R, Malibu Ken, vinyl, and of course, last up for the records is you had to do it, man. Gangstar, one of the best yet because it's true record yeah had to do it so um yeah and that's it man like i said i don't buy everything on vinyl and cd or everything on vinyl because i just buy like my favorites on vinyl and i go crazy with cds usually so um but yeah man that's gonna do it for the update so i just an hour of like for man that's got to be like a hundred out it seems like it was like a hundred albums i don't think it was but again if you guys are still watching i do have a bunch more things i'm just gonna kind of pop them into the the random updates i'm going to be continuing to doing because my it's just it's building up to the point again um it's just getting ridiculous and as for the chopped hearing 2019 release i'm going to do an overview of the whole collection when i get this month's package in from this year i'm just going to do a whole overview so you guys will see them then and uh, then I'm going to get into doing like the random albums. And then I do have a stack from like 2017 and 18 still that I have not updated. So in the future, you guys might just see a whole video of just like 2017 albums and then 2018 albums. And then I'll probably mix them in to, uh, with all these um, just random ones too. Because like I said, I'm buying so many albums again uh, just because I've been finding so many good prices, man. It's, it's awesome. So. But um, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the update. Leave your comments down below. Uh, and um, I will be back again, like I said, with my top 50 MCs video, which will be the next hip hop video, which will be out in a couple days after this one, hopefully. And check you guys then. Doozy!